So a handful of slides dealing with uh, being adaptive in an organization and what we call situational leadership. When we're dealing with teams, when we're dealing with organizational members, uh, being in an, in an environment where they have to respond quickly, uh, it's important to be adaptive, especially for the leader, but certainly for everybody who's in the situation, because we need to be aware of things that are happening in the area we're working, right? Things change in the organization as well as outside of the organization. We have external threats, we have external opportunities. Uh, so being constantly vigilant and paying attention and responding appropriately is really what this whole deal of being adaptive uh, is. And then the leadership style that goes along with that is what's called situational leadership. When we walk into a situation and we are paying attention to that situation, to the employees within it, and we are responding to the situation, we're responding to the employees within it. So uh, that's what, what this deal with. So the, the function of teams are never stagnant. First bullet point here, it, that's exactly what I was just mentioning. So things are happening constantly. We need to be there monitoring so we can help our teams be effective as well as efficient, right? So meeting their goals, being effective and efficient, making sure that we're using resources uh, appropriately. So situational leadership, um, being that person who can do that for the organization, for the team. So adapting your behavior and your style to suit the need of the situation and suit the need of the employees. And when we're doing all of this, clearly we have to understand still what the vision and mission are of the organization, what the goal is for this project. We have an overarching view of what needs to ha be happening. We have a bigger picture. So we are providing this to the team so that they can then execute uh, on what they need to be doing. Okay, adaptability, we already chatted about, I talked about, right? So paying attention to what is going on, the changes in the environment, opportunities, the threats, what is going on uh, within our operational unit, outside of our operational units, um, looking at the critical elements, right? So what are we paying attention to in this situation that could help us or hurt us? And then we're making decisions to make sure that we are coming out of the situation as uh, well as possible, right? So uh, making sure that we are not being hurt, that we are being benefited, that we can move forward uh, and get the job done. Uh, we are also talking here about two different areas that we should pay attention to as leader. The first one is called area of operation, right? So that's where we are housed, what we are doing, our immediate area of operation or responsibility. And the second one is called area of interest, and they are discussed on this next slide. So the area of interest and the area of responsibility, right? So area of interest is what you see in the middle here. That's the larger portion. So this is where the leader would employ um, assigned and supporting systems to accomplish the tasks that we have and the employees that we have. So this is our immediate work, so to speak. This is our day-to-day -day operations and what we need to get done. Our area of operate, oh, sorry, area of interest, which is outside of the area of operation. This is outside of our day-to-day -day, um, tasks and duties. So we are paying attention to what goes on externally to us, uh, because we might have to be in that environment outside of our daily operation to influence. Uh, what is going on there to make sure that those threats or opportunity those threats don't come into our area of operation and hurt us, and maybe there are some uh, opportunities that we can make use of that are outside of our area. So paying attention to that and maybe influence that in a way that lets us get that or have that or in some way help us. Okay, so those are the two areas that we should pay attention to. So we have a theory that deals with uh, explaining adaptability and why we ought to be uh, situational, uh, situationally aware and respond to changes uh, in the environment and the critical factors in a situation. And we call this complexity theory. So complexity theory, as we see uh, on the left side here of the slide, uh, 
says basically that we have interacting units, right? So we have pieces or people or things that are going on that are constantly changing, right? They are dynamic and they should be adapting to what goes on, what, what is thrown their, their way. So that is complexity theory. So we have moving pieces, basically. And then we have the complicated or complex pattern, right? So we have the complex pattern of behaviors, right? So people acting and structures that are popping up. They are emerging uh, in response to what is coming their way. And because they are responding, we can't really predict them, right? Because we are just adapting to what is happening to us in a, in a manner that is uh, beneficial or the best way we can do it. And because we are constantly adapting and responding, uh, it's hard to say what we're going to be doing. So we are ha it's hard to predict what it is. So that is what complexity uh, theory is about. So the two areas that we talked about on the prior slide, operations and interest, um, are really saying that these areas are complicated systems, right? So these areas of interest and responsibility, or sorry, the areas of operations and responsibility and the area of interest, they do represent complex adaptive systems, right? There are systems of people and things happening that are constantly responding. So... And I think these couple of bullet points right here are just recap of what we chatted about uh, up to this point. So our complex adaptive systems can be used to explain how emergent processes facilitate how organizations adapt to turbulent environments. So we have environments around us that are changing. Because of that, the processes that we have in our teams, within our units, they emerge, they come up, they bubble up, they exist as a result of and then these complex adaptive systems then tell us that that is happening. Okay, area of responsibility and operation are the day-to-day. -day, and these are the ones we need to be aware of. Okay, so adapting an... Ad so adopting adopting an adaptive culture or developing an adaptive culture. So up to this point on these couple of slides, we've been talking about the leadership and the area of, of um, uh, operations and re responsibilities, the areas of interest, the fact that we as a person have to be situational aware and adaptive. But we can also create a culture, a culture in our team, a culture in our unit, a culture in our organization that is adaptive where we have this mindset of paying attention, of being aware to what is going on and building in this mindset in our people so that they can take um, charge, they can be empowered, they can do things uh, in response to what is going on. So that is literally what the adaptive culture is. So it's literally just scaling this adaptability concept. So it really then consists of developing policies standard operating procedures, historical practices that can then help the team to respond quickly when things change in the environment, right? So it consists of developing policies, blah, 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 that support the leadership team's ability to respond quickly to changing environmental conditions. So let's build a climate in the organization that helps people be adaptive. So uh, in a culture like this, each person should be able to make decisions to take calculated risks, right? Not stupid risks, not just gambles, uh, but they should try, see what happens, maybe small pilot testings or experiment. If I do this with this team, what happens then? If I reduce the speed of this thing in delivery, what happens? Um, so that they get data, they can make better decisions. Um, learning from these experiences, making better decisions going forward, right? That's what an adaptive culture is. It's constantly trying new things and what is going well. So being adaptive, being an adaptive person, a leader, means that you're a change manager because change is constantly around us. Uh, we have nothing but change. And if you're in a position where you are good at adapting, then it's really your obligation or duty to help those around you. 
So you have people around you that are maybe not as great as being flexible and seeing things in the environment and then changing accordingly. So help those around you, especially if you have managers and leaders around you that are struggling with this. How can you help them see the situation better and be more responsive to it? Um, So uh, working with your team, working with your leaders to make that happen. We, we talk a lot about transformational leadership, being that leader that has that vision, seeing that big picture, that charismatic persona that people are attracted to, that they want to follow. So being that transformational leader uh, that can help us see the path forward when maybe the day-to-day seems mundane or like a struggle, that is a very good uh, leadership style to have for all of these situations. Uh, So we keep coming back to that transformational leadership where we are wanting to excite people uh, and then they want to go over and beyond their own um, sort of self-interest because they want to be part of transforming, of changing and doing better. Okay, that's going to wrap it for adaptive and uh, situational leadership.